Здравствуйте, товарищи! Welcome! As you can probably tell, this is going to be a video about my Soviet World War II stuff. So, let's get started, shall we? Well, as many of you know, obviously, I mostly do post-war Soviets. So, talking about, you know, 1960s, 1970s, well, I kind of spoil it there, 1970s and 1980s most of the time. And now I've started to do 1960s as well, uh, but... We, you guys are going to see that later. I'm still working on it. Uh, and now, currently, in the UK, I'm part of the 284th uh, Rifleman's Division. So, it is technically an engineer company, but currently I have my infantry boards on because the engineer boards, which I have here, uh, that I bought, are a little bit shorter uh, for my this uniform, the uniform I have here. I, I will have to change them. But I can still attach these to maybe a Telegorica. Anyways, uh, this is just presentation purposes. So we're basically going to be talking about uh, Soviet reenacting in general for the Second World War and things that you can do and uh, things that you should stay away from pretty much. And this is by no means to, you know, attack anyone personally. It's just to, you know, for people who are getting into Soviet reenacting, I think it is very important for us to know what is right, what is wrong, things that you shouldn't do and things you should be doing. And I hope this will be a helpful video for most people. Right, so basically uh, one thing that most uh, early, you know, first time reenactors do for Soviet is getting the wrong kit. Obviously, I mean, you have to do the research sometimes, but sometimes Oh, you know, that, that looks cheap. And I mean, for Soviet, I think I suppose that's going to work. Uh, I mean, personal experience, my friend bought some stuff from Hickey Shop and I used some costumes in a short film from Made in a Hickey Shop. And I can probably tell you guys that Hickey Shop stuff for Soviet, uh, they're not that good. The fabric is completely different. So using that is, uh, is a no-go for most people. Uh, another thing about getting the wrong stuff is using post-war uniforms. Obviously, there are certain things about post-war uniforms that are identical to the wartime ones, especially with the fabric for, let's say, the 1950s, 1960s uniforms. The fabric used to make pilotkas and the breeches are the same uh, with the wartime ones. However, the tunics, the gimnostyorka, with the, uh, with the post-war ones, are completely different meaning that the buttons are different for one hand one side the other side is as the pockets they they don't they don't have you know as you can probably tell the the the, the uh wartime uniforms the M m43 gymnastorka did not have uh, pockets for enlisted men yes in 1945 um some guys were issued with you know some enlisted men were issued with uh M43s with pockets, but that's that's very rare. And for you know a general go, I would say that you should be getting a uniform that has the correct correct uh, pockets arrangement, which is no pockets. <laughs> Anyways, uh, aside from that, obviously post-war stuff, uh, using post-war um, gray coats, if you may. I mean, give me a second here. Right, so. Post-war break coats are completely different than a good replica uh, wartime one. This is an M35 model, as you can probably tell because of the cuffs being pointy, is basically the, you know, the pre-war slash early war pattern that you can still probably use for late war, as you can probably tell from here. And you can see the Pagoni for the engineers that I did and the color tabs here. So um the oh, the post war post war gray coats first of all are uh different mainly the color is different it is a bit smaller the cuffs are the same as the 1941 model but um the the fabric used the wool quality they're all different they're all you know post war different materials and most of the stuff you're going to be buying anyways are from the 1980s 19 
70s. Anyway, so that's going to be, you know, a lot of differences in materials and yeah, that, that's, that's not going to cut it. So replica ones are the way to go, especially when the back details as well. The, the backs, like the back belts of wartime ones are huge. They're very big. The, the post-war ones, I can definitely tell, are the half size of the, 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 the wartime ones. So that is also, you know, those general shape differences that you spot. Obviously, from a distance, they look okay. And for a loner item, I wouldn't mind it being used. But they are still different and people can tell most of the time. Um, another another issue, which I'm also kind of guilty of because currently I am searching for the correct ones, is using, you know, incorrect uh, sapogi. Obviously, from, yeah, you, you can tell. it's It looks fine, fine, until you look underneath, which is... Big no no. Uh, the let's say okay, in 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 reenactors' terms, these are called the tractor saw boots, and they're incorrect for wartime use. The wartime ones would have little dots, little patterns on the sole, which is quote unquote called the dot sole pattern. Uh, they they are the correct style you should be getting, or you know leather leather soled ones, which are early war okay, but for late war, it's not gonna cut it. Uh, you can still use, you know, land lease items such as uh, land lease boots. Most popular ones are going to be British boots. Uh, B5 boots or, you know, any type of ammunition boot would work because as far as I understood, the land lease pattern boots were not like the World War II British ones, but the earlier type of, oh, earlier type of uh, uh, boots that were used. So. I will be using these when I get the correct uh, patties uh, for them. Uh, currently, I don't have any. But until then, my priority is to get the dot sold uh, jackboot, shall we say, sapogi. All right, obviously, for budget reasons, you can always also get an uh, telegorica or, you know, just, yeah, honestly, trying to get a good quality replica gray coat is important but you can also get you can also get a telegorica as well if you can give me a second here i have a post-war telegorica which has been you know converted for wartime use by i just removed the main pocket here the wartime the ones did not have any pockets and it, i got it second hand so it already had the buttons on here captured buttons captured german buttons were used but it wasn't that common like in this one, there's literally like on the cuffs and on the main closure, there are like three German captured buttons. So I'm going to remove these and put actual Russian uh, Telegorica buttons on them. Uh, it is possible to put the the Bogoni on top of the, uh, the Telegorica. It wasn't that common, but honestly, when I'm going to have an extra pair, might as well actually do it. Uh, aside from that, these are almost identical to the wartime ones. Obviously, the earlier pattern had the had a color just like the M35 model uniform, which is right around here, M35 model. So when you're wearing it together with this, always remember to, to have the color over this, you know, lack of color. Uh, honestly, they look better. The Telegorica looks better with the M35 on compared to the M43, because honestly, no color doesn't look good with the Telegorica, I can tell you that. Uh, aside from that, using Kirza pouches, using post war canteens with the greenish, dot, the brownish greenish uh, color is un incorrect, as well as using these uh, post-war belts for, you know, wartime use. I mean, there were similar examples made for, uh, what do you call it? Cadets, so Cursant, for Cursant, Cursanti, sorry, for Cursanti, Cursant, Cursanti, uh, you can use, you know, something similar to this, but it's not the same pattern, it's not the same thing, so don't use them for anything aside from Cold War use. And this is like a 1958 model one, I use it for 60s and 70s, anyways. So, that's pretty much it for the basic stuff. 
I will be doing some more videos on the full kit items and uniforms and all kinds of things. And I hope you guys would be interested in those. So, yeah, I hope to see you guys in the next video.